middle age. Right. <laughs> middle season. All right. Oh, thank God and praise Him and thank you for another day. Thank yes, you for Lord. Tell the you. spirit of joy that's in this house this morning. And oh. thank God for just everything He's done and those uh, who are sick and other things that are going on in your life. We praying for you and the other troubles and things that are happening, and we've got a message this morning that might help you. Uh, God surely knows how to bring a timely message. This morning, I want to look in the book of Matthew, the 8th chapter, the 23rd through the 27th verses. That's Matthew, the 8th chapter, 23rd through the 27th verses, and it says, and when he was entered into his ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and woke him, and saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose, rebuked the wind and the seas, and there was a great calm. But the men marvel, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Mm. And I want to look at verse 26. And he said unto them, Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose, rebuked the winds of the sea, and there was a great calm. And this morning I just want to talk to you about the storms of life. The storms of life. The... Disciples were, man, on a ship with the master himself, Jesus. And everything, I'm sure, was going good. Everything was going fine. I mean, God had just, Jesus had just healed Peter's mother-in-law uh, just before this. And he had a great number of people follow him. And another appeared to me to get away from them so he could move about. He decided he was going to cross over the water to put the water between he and thee. Now, you can rest assured that he knew before he got on that ship that this storm was going to come up. Jesus wasn't surprised. They may have been. I mean, obviously they were. <clears throat> but he wasn't. And you notice here that it says his disciples followed him. And when you follow Jesus, you're going to have troubles and storms come in your life. Hmm. And in all fairness, you're going to have them whether you follow him or whether you don't. Hmm. And it would make you think maybe to ask yourself this question this morning. If the disciples had to go through this storm in their life, were they better off going through it with Christ on the boat? Or would they have been better off being out there all by themselves in that storm? If they didn't have Jesus with them, what would they have done? They didn't have the ability to Calm the sea. They didn't have the ability to deal with this trial in their life. And it's the same for people today. A lot of times people, when they get saved or give their life over to the Lord, it seems to me that they have this expectation that they aren't going to have any problems. It's going to be somebody else. All their troubles are going to disappear. And they're going to fall on somebody else's house, not them. But that's not the case. We all are going to have storms that we got to go through, church. Some are going to be small. Some are going to be really huge, huge storms. Help us a little. Uh, it can be a fearful experience, especially when your life is threatened. Maybe you get the news from the doctor you got cancer. There's a lot of that going around. A lot of people pick up the phone and they get a phone call and suddenly all of a sudden 
A storm is blown into their life. Their loved one is killed in the car wreck. Or, God forbid, shot down in the street, dead. And there's nothing you can do. You sit there, you wonder, you ponder, you cross your mind, you have memories, you wish you had said this or that, but nothing you can do. It's a storm in your life. Jesus was trying to teach them and us some things about the storms that come to life. First thing is, is that this storm rose unexpectedly. That's what this word said, behold, there arose. All of a sudden, from nowhere, the clouds start rolling in. Maybe the hailstones were falling. A great wind, we know, had arisen. And they were in a rather small ship. I don't care how big a boat you in. If you were in a storm on the sea, it's no small matter. Because in the sea, man wasn't made to live in the sea. Man was made to live on the earth. And so the first problem that occur, uh, pops up or occurs, occurred here is they were out of their element. And when trouble comes, trouble puts us out of our element. And if we don't have Jesus with us, we are liable to be lost in the storm. This storm, number two, was great. It says that in so much the ship was covered with the waves. Now, I don't know if you've ever been on the sea, but you imagine yourself out in a boat, even a 30-footer, with waves coming over the top of it. I don't know if you've ever watched that show that comes on, man, The Greatest Catch. Those guys are out there <coughs> fishing for lobster and these huge mountainous waves are crashing over the boat and it's cold out in the Arctic. Mm. Those men are out there voluntarily. And yet they weather these storms and many of them are lost. They, they say that there's not a season that comes up there that they don't lose somebody in the storm. Mm. So they know going out into this storm, amen, that it takes great courage. This storm here as well was life threatening. My third point. When you are in this life that we are in, we're going to have storms. Joe said in the 14th chapter, first verse, that man that is born of a woman is of but a few days and full of trouble. Your lifetime you have here. You're going to have all kinds of things come up. You have problems from toothaches to headaches to uh, back aches to stomach aches to headaches and heartaches. Uh, mm. People you are married to, uh, you might, people, I know people don't want to be married. Been in a marriage, they hate it, can't get out, stuck, they're not happy because <coughs> of a storm in their life that just won't go away. There are folks that own jobs and hate their jobs and working there. And they can't get off, they can't replace it, and they feel like they're stuck in this storm. Mm. Sometimes if you change your attitude and begin to find Jesus, you'll find peace in your storm. Yes. He said in Psalms, David said, the sorrows of death come past me, and the pains of hell got hold of me. I found trouble and I found sorrow. And we have these times in our life, saints, you're just going to have to do, do the sorrow. You're going to have to walk down the trouble road. You, you can't dance every day. You can't laugh every day. You, every day is not Friday, as they say. Every day is not party day. You're going to have some days where it's going to be a, a sad day. It's going to be a day of sorrow and suffering and agony even. Help us. This is just the way of a man. He said also in Ecclesiastes, Solomon began to talk and he said, For all his days of sorrow and his travail of grief, yea, his heart taketh not rest in the night. This is also vanity. There are going to be nights where you are not going to amen, have a peaceful, restful night's sleep, as they advertise in those commercials. You're going to have nights where you'll lay there and You'll toss and turn, you'll turn the TV off and turn the TV back on and turn the TV off and turn it inside and 
And you're just not going to be able to rest no matter what you do. Jeremiah even talked about the condition of Israel, said we look for peace, but no good came. And for a time of health, and behold, what did we get? We got trouble. And so we're going to look for peace in situations sometimes, hoping to find peace, hoping to find rest, but that we're not going to be able to find it. And so we have to do, man, what they did. And they began to, man, come to Jesus and wake him up saying, we need you to save us because we are perishing. You see, when we get in trouble, we don't have to wait, actually, until the trouble starts. They could have gotten Jesus a long time before they did, but they waited. They waited until they got in trouble. They waited until they had a problem. Uh, I guarantee you these experienced fishermen, man, had looked at ways of turning the boat into the wind. They had tried on their own to... To, to keep the boat straight and steered. Uh, but I can imagine that one of those waves caught that boat and flipped it sideways and it flipped that boat almost over and water was coming into the ship and faster than they could get it out. And that's when they realized, saying, save us, we perish. Sometimes people make the same mistake in their life. They wait until trouble gets so big and then they want to call on Jesus. One of the biggest things that I found out, and one of the biggest reasons why marriage has failed is because when the people come for help, when they come to the pastor for help, when they come to the marriage counselor for help, they have already torn that marriage up so much that it's almost impossible sometimes to put it back together. They've said all the hurtful, mean things and built up over the years and and, and, and anger set in, resentment is set in so deep that it just cannot be uprooted. One of the things I found out for the people who do repair their marriages, many of them come early and come often, amen, to get help. They don't wait until things are out of control. They come early and they put their pride aside and say, we need help. We need you to help us. Amen. And Jesus said that if you live after the flesh, you shall die, but if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of your body, you shall live. Man, Paul went on to say in Philippians, he said, Yea, doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. You see, there are people who... Man, love and pride, they love themselves so much that they don't come, amen, and seek Jesus when they have a problem. When they have problems with their co-workers, they want to get in there and run their mouth and get them told mm -hmm. and deal with them themselves rather than turning to the Lord immediately to let Him quench the pain, to let Him take the hurt out of the words that are said to them. Help us. Oh, no, they put their flesh up, they put their pride up, and... They begin to deal with these people from the human perspective. And then when they said so much and got themselves in trouble, and they get rolled up, and they get called into the office, and they say, well, he started it. Well, the supervisor says, I know, but you did this and you did that to escalate the problem. And instead of being a solution, they become part of the problem, and then if not the problem, because now they got all these grievances that they want to air. And they could have taken the thing to God, looked and saw themselves as called of God, saw themselves, amen, as the anointing of God, and realized that this person that is bringing these things to me, these accusations, that is calling me these names or whatever they're doing to me, man, I'm here because I'm example, an example to them. Man, instead of seeing yourself, with yourself thinking you are cute, or thinking you somebody, or thinking you special, Man, nobody can talk to you because you are such and such and so and so. And you have this attitude and you, man, you think, you say, well, I, I told these people about Jesus and how he can change you. And they're looking at you and God gave you an opportunity to show them by having them do something to you so that they can see what a Christian looked like. And they didn't get to see it because you couldn't get you out the way so God could be seen to you. 
hear what I'm trying to tell you. Amen. And so, man, there are times when we have an opportunities in these storms to call on the Lord, call on Him early, call on Him often, but then we wait. And so we get to the point now in our job where we've had so many confrontations and different things, and the folks are ready to just get rid of us. Mm. You see, like, the, that, you know, you fail to realize that God is the one that's allowing this, or the devil is the one, amen, that God is using to have these people to attack you, and it may be one here or there, and had you stood the storm, you may have been considered for a supervisory position. The man looked at you and said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. God said, I'm going to bless you in spite of because you did it my way. You didn't do it your way. Sometimes we don't see these things because the only thing we see is us. The only thing that matters is what somebody said to me, what somebody's doing to me. And I don't like it. I don't have to take it. And then you got your magpie friend on the telephone who's telling you, you know, if that was me, I wouldn't take that. You know, you're telling them what's going on and they're just as unspiritual as you are. And they're telling you, I, if it's me, child, I wouldn't take that from them. Uh, uh, you know, because you, you don't have to do this because you know who you are, you know what this is, and yeah, 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 and you, and they're there to advise you, but they're not advising you according to the Word of God. So, we are supposed to, when we have troubles and trials, the first thing we should do before we even get involved in it, before we ever open our mouth, before we ever think about how we think about it, is we need to seek God. Man, before we let the fear demons get on us and pile up on our back, uh, and we all shook up and shaking and crying and snot running out of our noses, uh, uh, instead of us being all fearful, what we need to do is seek the Lord from the beginning. We need to hear God's voice when you see the storms coming in. Don't wait until, amen, the rain is falling all on you, until the wind is blowing all on you. When you see that storm walking down the hallway, uh, when you see that storm coming around the corner, uh, when you see that storm coming in the door, amen, uh, you need to see God right then and there. So that when the storms roll up, uh, you're already ready. Christ has already calmed the storm. See, it may be raging, they may be railing on you, they may be fussing, they may be doing whatever, they may be talking about you, could be cussing you. It doesn't matter because if your mind is already given to the Lord, they can't get in, they can't get to you. You hear what I'm trying to tell you? Amen. And so Jesus was trying to give them some experience. He was trying to show them, amen, uh, that how, amen, that how calm things was. Uh, he just said to them, why are you fearful, ye a little faith? Uh, do you think I would put you out here in this storm uh, and, and, and just leave you to perish? Uh, do you think that I took you out on this boat not knowing uh, that this wind was going to rise up, uh, that the rain was going to fall uh, do you think I just put you on here all of a sudden uh, and I'm surprised by what happened? Uh, no, I put you in this situation on purpose. Uh, I put you in this situation deliberately. Uh, I put you in this situation so that you can see that I'm in charge, so that others can see that I'm in charge. Uh, and see, it says the men marvel, saying, What manner of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him. Uh, what manner of individual or person are you? Uh, people will ask when you do the things of God. Uh, they will say, you know, if that was me, uh, I know I couldn't have taken what you took. Uh, if that was me, I wouldn't have been able to do what you did. Uh, I don't see how you put up with this day in and day out. Uh, and I don't see how you go through what you've been through. Uh, you know, brother, I'm glad, and don't take this the wrong way, I'm glad it's you and not me, uh, because I don't know, I couldn't do it. Uh, amen, they'll tell you. Uh, but see, when you got Jesus, amen, inside of you, uh, you will make people marvel. Uh, 
You will make people scratch their head. Uh, you will confuse and confound them. Uh, they'll begin to wonder what kind of person you are. What are you made of? Uh, how is it uh, that you were able to do it? Uh, and some of those who were giving you the hardest times will be the ones that God will turn around uh, and make them your biggest defenders uh, because they will ultimately turn to be your protectors. Did not the word say uh, that he he will make your enemies uh, be your footstool. Uh, the same people uh, that didn't want you uh, in a position uh, will be the same people that you will be bossing uh, over. The same people uh, who predicted your failure uh, will fail themselves uh, while God is blessing you. Uh, the same ones who can't keep a job but uh, won't have a job but you will because uh, they'll be gone in due season. Uh, I've seen it myself uh, how God has made me uh, endure and go through some things uh, and those very people uh, were causing me the problems. Uh, I was standing there uh, when they got fired. Uh, I was the last one to see them walk out the door uh, and I've seen them have to come back and drop things off uh, and they try to go around and hide around the corner or give it to somebody else uh, and for some reason God had me standing there uh, when they come around the corner uh, and they run face to face in with me uh, and don't look at them and smile uh, like I've got joy on the inside. Uh, I don't say nothing. Uh, let them go ahead and go and do what they gonna do and leave. Uh, but God let me know uh, and he let them know uh, that that same one you tried to get rid of uh, is still there uh, and you're gone. Uh, see you gotta give God a chance uh, in the storms of your life. Uh, yeah. You got to give <laughs> God the opportunity uh, and the sooner you give him the opportunity, uh, the better the conclusion is going to be. Uh, don't wait until uh, you get all the bad news, uh, until you analyze it all uh, and call everybody you know to call uh, and run to every doctor uh, that's on the, your, in your town. Uh, don't wait till then uh, and then come crawling to God uh, and say, well, Lord, I tried everything else, uh, so I may as well try you. Uh, let me tell you something. Huh? When you put God first, uh, you say, Lord, huh, what do I do? Huh? Yeah. Lead me the direction I should go in. Huh? Yeah. How do I solve this problem? Huh? You got me in this for a reason. Huh? What is it that I need to see? Huh? What am I missing? Huh? What is it about me huh, that you need to try and test? Huh? What is it in my character huh, that you see as a sign of weakness huh, that you bring this situation huh, into my my life. Uh, there yes. must be a reason. Uh, yes. There's something about me uh, that you see that I don't see. Uh, there's something about me that I think is strong, uh, but you know it's a facade. Right. You know it's, I'm really uh, actually weak in that area. Uh, right. I put up this front and this mm. bluff uh, to make others think I'm strong, uh, right. but actually I'm a weak person. Uh, I'm fearful. Uh, I don't have the courage that I profess. Uh, mm. I don't have the life uh, that I see. I live. God help me. God, I know her. I know there's a reason. Show me the reason. Because I want to please you in all that I do and all that I say. I want my life to be a life that you are proud of. I want my walk to be a walk that you're proud of. I want my character to be a character yes. that'll cause you to brag to yes. the devil. On, uh, that'll yeah. cause you to confront uh, the evil of this world uh, that will mock uh, the agents uh, and the antichrist uh, that is in this world. Uh, I want my life to be an example. Uh, help me, Lord. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> help me. <laughs> so, he said, he said, Amen. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Amen. If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you should say unto this mountain, or to this trial, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible unto you if you have the faith. You see, faith isn't talking. Faith 
is formed in the test and your trial. Faith is what you really do. It's not what you say. Faith, your faith, who you are, what your faith is, will come out in a trial. When the storm comes into your life, I don't care what you said up to that point. If you really want to know who you are, what you really are, what God sees, not what you say, not what you tell everybody, not the phony fake front you've been putting on, but I'm talking about what you really are. That's when you know. That's when you know. That's how you know. And if you really are honest with yourself, there are times that you have to be disappointed in yourself. And there have been times I've had to be. I've had to be very disappointed in me because what I said, what I thought I was, when I was tested, I found out not what I said I am. So I had to do something about it. I had to begin to learn to look and to change, amen, my way of thinking. And I'm still not immune. I'm still not immune to failure. Man, I pray God keep me from failing. The scriptures say, now to him that is able to keep you from falling. Amen. I walk in self-confidence, I sure do. Now I'm not going to walk around here scared me, my head all down and all this stuff. Because I'm a man, I walk upright. As a man of God, I walk upright. I'm not afraid, I don't have to be politically correct. I'm not worried about whether you how you perceive me, whether you like me, whether you like what comes out of my mouth or not. I don't answer to you. I answer to God. Man, so when the storms come, I'm not going to go hide some place because the wind is blowing. I'm going to stand in the storm. I'm not going to go run under cover. Hey, man, I'm going to stand in faith. Stand in confidence. Stand in trust. Stand in knowing. See, I know who I am. And when you know who you are, man, once you really know, then you are able to, man, say, God, here's what's going on. Now, you know good and well, I could get this person straight. Or I could do this or that to handle that. You know that. Because you know me. You know how I used to be. And I'm trying to get rid of that me. So I need you to help me today. Now I don't know if you're going to fix this problem or not. I would like for you to. I sure, you know me, you know I like for this to be gone. I don't want to put up with this. But it's your choice. It's your call. Whatever you do or you don't do, help me to do what I got to do. Help me to get through this. If you ain't going to move it. Okay, if you ain't going to move this situation, you ain't going to do nothing about it, then you need to give me some Holy Ghost, whatever I need. Faith. A word. Something to help me to do the right thing. Because it ain't no need of me going through this and being lost and it don't count for nothing. And I might have to go through it again. Amen. Amen. Now, nobody want to be in no storm. Nobody want to. Who wants to deal with a problem? I don't want to deal with a problem. But you may not have no choice. So if you don't have no choice, then why not have the right attitude in it from the beginning? Why go through all halfway through it and then figure out you ain't got no choice? God ain't going to do nothing. Now you got to readjust everything you've done has been wrong up to this point. Now you got to go back, maybe make some apologies and do whatever you got to do to fix it. Yes. When all you got to do is just have the right attitude from the beginning. Mm. Maturity. You know, I know mm. God, my faith says one thing. But see, faith should be the flow of our behavior. And not the serum for emergency. See, serum is something you take to fix something. So our faith should be a constant flow of or behavior characteristic of us. And not something we got to dig up all of a sudden because here's a 911. See, faith should be who we are. It should be the fountain of our lives. In other words, the fountain is where the water continually flows. It should be the fountain of our lives and not a beam 
for emergency support. See, we, we shouldn't have to uh, 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 have faith, uh, find faith all of a sudden for an emergency. It should be flowing from us at all times. It, it should be, it should be the uh, uh, major or continual thought of our mind, not a sporadic thought or activity aroused by some need. Faith shouldn't just have to be turned on because of a situation. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It should always be flowing. <clears throat> Faith should be a constant plea of our heart and not the occasional cry of desperation from us. Faith should always be in our heart. It shouldn't be all of a sudden I'm in desperate need for some faith. But a way to live. But a way to live. I, I, you, you don't drive your car generally with the seatbelt off. You have it on. When you get in the car, you put your seatbelt on. Because it's too late to grab for your belt when you see somebody pulling out in front of you. Amen. Amen. You, 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 it's too late to put your seatbelt on. You should have had it on when you started. When you woke up that morning, when you got out of bed, you should have your faith on. Amen? Amen. You see, sometimes you can get too far to re for, for recovery. Sometimes you can actually be so far into something before you go try to look for faith, it's too late because the problem has got to be on the point of salvation. Because you didn't do what you were supposed to do. Amen? Amen. You got to understand the scriptures tell us that there isn't any uncommon temptation. It says no temptation that's taken you, but such is common to man. But God who is faithful will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape. And I've said this before, that you may be able to bear it. So your escape might be in bearing it. See, people leave that last far off. He will also make a way of escape. The way of escape for these disciples wasn't to jump off the boat. The way of escape was in Christ. And then he spoke to the storm. And he calmed it. Now, if he had calmed them and told them, don't worry about this. The storm's going to stay. But we're not going to sink. There'll be no loss of a life on the ship. That's what Paul told them in, in the book of Acts. If he had said that, but I'm gonna, we're going to ride this storm out, they would have rode the storm out. They would have been safe. And sometimes you just got to ride the storm out. And so, amen, in the final analysis, what the disciples did is they confessed their need. They broke their pride. They, they almost waited until it was too late. We perish, save us. Don't wait until it's too late. Man, don't wait until you are in trouble. Don't wait until you've done everything you can do. Amen. Find the Lord and find Him early. Amen. It's because the storms of life, amen, are raging. God bless you. This time, amen, we want to open up. If there's anyone who has need of prayer, amen, we want to open up, amen, for prayer this morning. We thank you for listening to us on our broadcast ministries. And those of you who have been watching us on Day Nexus Television, we thank God for you and we appreciate you. And we pray that you will turn back and listen to us again. Thank you. Amen. And don't let it be said too late, too late to enter in at the gate. Amen. So God bless you in my prayers. Amen. We pray that the Lord will strengthen you, take you through, yes. and help you to stand your storm. No matter what comes your way, you're able to go through it. Amen. He said he would never leave you. He would never forsake you. Lord, I'm with you always. always. Amen. He will take you through. All you have to do is just, amen, set yourself. Yes. Amen. To set yourself. Amen. Amen. And you get through the storm. Amen. Like that eagle. But we ain't going to talk about him today. But we thank God. God bless you in my prayer.
Amen. May the Lord ever strengthen you. Amen. You're young in the Lord, and God will take you through. Amen. 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 Fifty years from today, you say that old woman told me, Amen, fifty years from today, that I wouldn't have the same problem like I did. Trust me, you won't. Amen. 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 Amen.